You know, it shouldn't, but it still freaks me out sometimes that people say E3 Expo. Expo is already the third E. It's on the logo. What the... some seriously inconsiderate editing on my part. Hello everybody and welcome to the Roundup, a bite-sized and slightly bent look at E3 2011. I'm Trevor for BentPodcast.com and I'm going to take you through what happened yesterday, June 6th, on the first day of this year's biggest electronics and gaming convention. Day one was of course dominated by the press conferences by two of the big three. Microsoft kicked the day off by continuing to push Xbox as a total entertainment platform, bringing YouTube and live TV to Xbox Live as well as new media partners to bring more movies, music, games, and video content. They're also bringing in cloud storage for save games and Bing Search for the console. Coupled out with a revamped Windows Phone 7 inspired dashboard and Live has never looked better. Also, Kinect is getting lots of love with voice-controlled search options for Xbox Live, better support for multiple players, and more developers getting on board. Ubisoft announced, for example, that all future Tom Clancy games will support Kinect, which is a pretty big deal considering that Microsoft seems to have been having some trouble getting actual hardcore game companies caring at all about motion control. Now, Sony's press conference was an absolute cavalcade of games, but the big show sealer was the NGP's big debut. Now called the PlayStation Vita, which is kind of a step backwards in terms of naming, the console itself is looking great with plenty of control options as well as searingly gorgeous graphics and a fantastic lineup of Sony's flagship franchises. Not to mention that the handheld is priced at $250 US, which makes it a direct dollar-for-dollar competitor with the 3DS while offering way more bang for your buck. Other highlights include more move support more 3D integration for the PlayStation 3 because people want that apparently, more cross-platform gaming between the PlayStation 3 and the Vita, and like Microsoft, cloud storage. On the games front, E3 is once again suffering a bad case of the sequels with Halo, Mass Effect, Assassin's Creed, Fable, Uncharted, Modern Warfare, Little Big Planet, Gears of War, and other big franchises all getting new installments. While the press conference is dominated, and of course they want to flaunt their biggest franchises at those, I'm really starting to look forward to seeing some of the originals coming to the different platforms this year. There have been some absolutely fantastic trailers so far coming out of E3. Bioshock Infinite really takes first place for me, with brightly stylized graphics that move away from this console generation's obsession with gray and brown, some innovative movement mechanics, lots of vertical movement, excellent design, and above all, more of the gene-splicing action we all know and love from the first game. Assassin's Creed Revelations looks to continue and finally close the Ezio arc started in Assassin's Creed 2 while offering new locations and a slightly darker feel to the game. And personally, being a PC gamer at heart, the Battlefield 3 teasers and tech demos are really making me excited for this installment in the franchise. You know, I've never been a fan of the Fable franchise, and this year's demo has not changed my mind about that. Once again, I'm watching a trailer that's making me feel awkward, and I can't get myself excited to save a world that I have actively not cared about for a few games now. Hey, P. Molyneux, how about Black and White 3? You know, the franchise that you started that is actually innovative? More bad are the remasters of the original Halo, called Halo Anniversary, and God of War Origins, an HD remaster of the PSP God of War games that's coming out on the PlayStation 3. First of all, the God of War games on the PSP are only a couple years old now. Really don't need to see them on PlayStation 3. And you know guys, if you keep fondling your flagship franchises like this, they're gonna start to chafe. The major science fiction franchises are both getting new games this year, with Kinect, Star Wars, and Star Trek for the PlayStation 3 with full move support. Star Wars looks visually cheap and gameplay demos have been laggy at best. Oh, and you have to tell your lightsaber to turn on. Remember when Obi-Wan did that in the movies? Star Trek is something that I should be excited for, but it looks like any other run-and-gun third-person action title. It's awesome to see the likenesses of Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto. 
and the design from J.J. Abrams' movie is translated really nicely to the game, but I'm starting to see why the hardest core Trekkies have been saying that Star Trek has been genericized since 2009. Last, Postal Free. I loved Postal 2 back when I was an angry teenager, but the want on violence and political incorrectness is not doing it for me this time around, guys. I'm sorry. And I really get the sense that the two minute trailer is going to be the most charm that we see from this game ever. I'm going to have to wait until I see more gameplay and maybe get some hands on time with it myself, but I think this game is just going to be ugly. Alright, guys, that is it for the day one roundup. Once again, I'm Trevor for BentThePodcast.com. Thank you very much for watching. And, uh, by the way, why don't you go to benthepodcast.com, listen to the past shows, check out the articles that we've written, and, you know, it's the hottest nerds on the internet. Thanks for watching, see you guys tomorrow.